Okay, let's see how we get on with this. So, uh, just to prefix this, I am most likely going to be doing a fair bit of programming today, and more like in-engine stuff. So, if you're more interested in like design and animation and things like that, then probably check out one of the other VODs or um, come back when I'm doing some of that stuff. I might end up... Uh, I might end up doing some animations and things, but it'll be, like, not a lot compared to the other things that we'll be doing today, hopefully. The goal, hopefully, is to set up um, line-of-sight movement for the enemy, which I've never done before, so this will be fun, I think. <laughs> so, I'm just going to get everything moved across. Okay. There you go. So, I'll just for the benefit of anyone who hasn't watched the other um, videos, one second. Let me just fix this so I can actually see this chat and things like that. Um, and actually while while I'm setting up, I'm just gonna um I'm just gonna put this link out on Twitter and things just to because I, I sometimes forget. One slide. <laughs> okay, so that's out, and now I can do this. There we go. Right, so just to recap over what we've got so far. Um, currently we have basic movement. Um, we have. A little stabbing attack that the player can do. It's a bit janky, but... Oh. I don't recall that being a bug before. Okay, so we'll fix that first. <laughs> uh, oops. There we go. Yeah, but um, anyway, you can stab the enemy and they bleed and die eventually. Um, so... I want to fix that issue we've just found, which somehow I wasn't aware of. Um, I'm going to assume it's maybe something in here. Offset. You offset it to 10 on the x axis. Hmm. So then if I. Rotate that that way. What happens when I play that? It's recent. Yeah, okay. So, oh, because it's, why is it changing position? Changing position of player weapon. Okay, well instead I think what we could do is move the area under there, and then move this instead. Um, let's just reset the rotation. Yeah, so, my plan, I just got the wrong thing, there we go. Right, so my plan is to, instead of moving the position of this node, move the offset of this, because I don't know why it's probably a lapse of judgement on my behalf, so let's get rid of that. And now, in here, we want to say, 
offset. We need animation. This is the stab animation, so we're going to offset it. I'm hoping this works by, say, well, how did I do that? Oh, numlock wasn't on for some reason. Yep. All right. So, ah, see, this is what I was afraid of. It's not. It's not um, moving the the collision. That's fine. So we'll pop that back in there like that. One more done. There we go. Um, instead, then what I can do will reset. So now, when we stab, we offset the weapon. And we'll also we'll have to try and key in the offset for this. So this is not really what I wanted to be doing, but it'll hopefully work for now. Um I bet if I do collision it'll end up doing the same thing as um as it did before, but with the collision instead of the sprite. Hmm. Okay. What we can do instead, we can remove... Well, not remove, but we can... probably change this, because it doesn't need to be the whole blade. Um, let me just reset. So, this can instead be a circle. And the circle can just cover the end like that. Oops. Um, yeah, like that. And now, what we want to do, we're going to add a, a node 2D in here just for position storage. Yeah. So you'll you'll see why it's a circle on the end now. So basically. We're going to code it so that this hit area always equals the position of this. So this is, um, what's a good name for this? Uh, I was going to call it blade position, but not everything will be bladed. Um, we'll just call it hit position. Uh, Weapon hit position. So, in here now, um, I don't think I need an entire. Uh, we could do a function for the sake of optimization so we only call it when we actually need it. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Okay, so this is function update. Um, update weapon it was we want to avoid that and now simply in here we just want to say uh, the hit area dot position equals uh, equals position position <laughs> yeah I don't like the name of that position position um, what can we call it hmm Uh, weapon edge 
How did I do weapon weapon edge? Hmm. I don't know why I type that. Weapon edge. So that's just going to be weapon edge position. Um, so then here. Mm. Okay, now this is going to be too much hassle to do this for the sake of a very, very minor little bit of optimization. So instead, I'm just going to call it in here and always move it. So, um, look at area position equals the weapon edge position. And I'm just going to deploy with collision shape so we can see. Uh, well, that's not working. Okay. Um, what have I done to the animation now? Uh, weapon animations. So reset and stab. Yeah, okay. Well, that should be... Like... Oh man, this snap thing does my head in. Like that. He's a stab. Right, we're only changing the offset in that one, so we need to get rid of the position. The offset gets reset to 10. And then in here, gradually increased to 20. Why is... Why does it, like, immediately... Right. I mean, uh, I wish I knew more about Godot's animation. Oh yeah, you can see my knee again. That's becoming a routine thing on the stream now. Should know by now that I sit weird. All right. So we reset, we stab. Okay, and then in the code, we should hopefully be moving the collision. No. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> I've messed it up. Alright, stab, and then... Here. Oh god, now I need to snap again. Uh, it can go back to 10, and then that can go back to being, no, it should already be disabled on. Okay, so, oop, that's fine. But now, why isn't this working? Is it global position I need, maybe? No, nope, that changes absolutely nothing. Fuck. Hmm. I really don't know, like, a good way of doing this. I wish I did. I mean, this is kind of pointless because 
this as its own position. So we don't even need this, that's completely irrelevant. Hold on. Okay. So that's, yeah, okay, I get it now. Oh, this is going to be annoying, right. Well then, I don't, I don't even need this then, do I? This, this is pointless. Get rid of that. We can just do it all in animation, which means I also don't need that. Which I prefer anyway. Um, right, so in the animations, reset, that's correct. Stab, correct. Until, why is this not fast forwarding? Is it the snap thing? Right, so... Yeah, so... Um... We want to affect... Yes? No, because that's position, it's not opposite. Uh... This is why we need it in code. How do I get the fucking end of it? <laughs> Oh, it's so annoying. Right, let's go back to where we had it. I, pre I preferred the way it was before. Let me just... Right, there we go, I've reverted the git thing, so reload. reload. Right, let's see what we've got. It doesn't move with that one, though. Wait, what, what the hell did I do? Because now it's... Now it works, what the fuck? Oh, good old, what are you doing to me? Right. Because I, I, I didn't notice that problem before, so it looks like that wasn't actually a problem before, so I must have changed something. Right. So... Remove the offset of that. Can I put that in there, and will that offset that as well? No. Yeah, so that's not working. We still have the same problem. I mean, we fixed the weird wobbledy wobbledy thing. Um... I suppose we could put it on from where the weapon actually hits, rather than move it along with the weapon. Let's see what that's like. Something like that. Where it looks like without collision shapes. This is pretty rough for now. I might have to just settle with it for now. Yeah, I think that's fine. It it's rough, and I don't really like it, but it's functional at least. So better than nothing. It's a strange kind of monster. Though. Kind of tastes like Jack and Coke, which is bad because I don't drink anymore. And I never really liked the taste of Jack and Coke anyway. Um, uh, what am I doing? Right, we want to do the line of sight movement. So, I did like a little... Uh, this. <laughs> so, this shows us how a lost enemy movement should work, lost being line of sight. So, an enemy will start in its um, its home area, like a little zone where it spawns. And then, once the player enters like an awareness circle around the enemy, we're going to check if a ray cast shot from the middle of the enemy to the middle of the player meets any obstacles or anything in, the, in between. Let me just extend that. Um, if it does then we ask, well, has the enemy already seen the player? So, like, the raycast has hit it. If not, reset. 
if yes go to last known position so once that line of sight's broke we'll spawn an invisible object on the ground there that the enemy will walk towards which will be the the last known position and then once we've gone to the last known position if the player is still in the enemy's awareness shape then we run this system again so yeah <laughs> and then it, if it doesn't hit a um if it doesn't hit an obstacle between the enemy and the player then it'll just move directly toward the player and that should hopefully as well get rid of any um complicated uh pathfinding and things like that at least for now we can use a star and things like that and i think Godot has its own built-in one but for now we're just going to try and keep it as simple as possible so i guess first order of business is probably um i guess utility we can create a new scene no, we're going to need a new folder because it'll have a script. Or will it? It won't have a script for now, I don't think. So, uh, this will be creature um creature um um or will it have a script? Because we want to be able to distinguish what type of creature goes there as well. It's going to have a script. That's fine too. So, new folder. Creature. Um, 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 let's just be a 2D scene for now. So, that. And pop it in there. Right. Okay, so uh, what this is going to represent is just where the creatures will return to once they're not doing anything else. And it's also where they'll spawn, I think. So I think we're going to do an area 2D. Um, Sorry if I talk really slow as well. I'm conscious of it, but like I'm trying to think at the same time as talk. So, yeah, this is going to just be zone, and then zone shape. So within this is going to be a circle collision, and not really going to matter how big it is because we're going to set that in code. I think. Can we set that in code? Does this does this not change any properties? Undo set handle. What does scale do? Oh. Huh. Well, I didn't know I could turn a circle into an ellipse like that. That's interesting. We'll use we'll use the scale property anyway to change the size. So uh what do I want to do now? We're gonna need a script. And in here we're gonna have zone size and I need to actually declare that. Zone size will be an int, and as standard, we can just have it set to two. And we'll just say on ready, we want um, zone shape dot scale dot actually. Yeah, because this is going to be a vector, isn't it? So we can just say equals vector 2, and then zone size. Zone size. This does only allow for 
Um, no, I'm not going to do it like that. So we're going to do zone width and zone length. So the X will be width and the Y will be length. Like so. So now hopefully in here, when we change these on runtime, it'll change the scale. Then again, the trouble with that is as a as someone developing the game, you wouldn't be able to see. That might be pointless, because it's not going to update here. Hmm. Don't think we need that. Unless we want it to be updated in code at any point. No, because we'd probably just want to disable it in code. No, we can get rid of all that. Um, right, we'll leave that for now. Uh, we might end up using the script, we might not. But, yeah, there's no pressure to it. So, in the level, we want creature home zone. And within... See, my, my point was within here. Ah, we do need that because you can't access... Ah, okay. So we do need that. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah, because you can't access the um the area. Do we actually <laughs> I don't even think we need this. We can just make this the same parent, right? Make scene root and then delete that now. Delete that. And then drop that on there in case it's needed. Um Get rid of that. Right, what do we look like now? So we've got creature home zone. Yeah, so we can change everything from here. So if we do like 8 and 5, there we go, we've got like this little area. So that will work for now. Um, Uh, I'm going to code it directly into the imp for now, but I'm going to have... Uh, let me just bring up my notes. I'm going to have... Uh, where's it gone? Yeah, a behaviour array. So there's going to be um, just a big list of behaviours, like every behaviour that every enemy, including bosses and things, can do. And then certain enemies will just call those behaviours and it'll operate on them, so it'll be modular. Um... So, like, say, for instance, an enemy has a sword, then they'll be able to call on the behaviour stab, for instance. But, um, yeah, so as long as it's all set up to have that all in the same way, then they'll all be able to just call on that, rather than keep recoding the same behaviour and reanimating the same thing over and over again. In fact, it'll still probably need the animation side, but it'll save on code at least anyway. Um, yeah, so for now, I'll code it directly into the, I lost the chat, there we go, yeah, I'll code it directly into the imp for now. So this little guy, Movement. Okay. Um, we are going to need. What are we going to need? Um, we're going to need a raycast. We're also going to need a detection zone, so that'll be an area. 
top back into this. So the ray cast is going to be um, loss cast. Oh, I've done that. Loss cast. And then this is going to be detect. Detection area. This is going to be area shape. Okay. A little bit. Um, right, so the detection area shape. Probably something like that. Uh, this is not going to be enabled to begin with. Now, in here, uh, we're just going to we're going to gather those elements. So we want on ready lost cast equals. Um, we can do this I think. Well, I'm not getting auto complete now because I haven't done that. Right, so last cast is uh, and then I'm ready for uh, oh my god. Yeah, I mentioned in a previous video moving over to the Huntsman is like really um. It's made things rather strange when I'm typing. So, like, it's not a bad keyboard. I actually prefer it to the Black Widow, but, like, I make a lot more mistakes because the keys are a little more sensitive. Oh, God, I really don't like that. Ah, that's nasty. Anyone who doesn't like Jack and Coke, stay away from Monster Assault. It's just, it's just nasty. It tastes a bit like Jack and Coke, but I wouldn't recommend. To be honest, even if you do like Jack and Coke, it's just it doesn't taste like an energy drink. It's weird, right? Lost movement. So let's bring up our plan again. Uh, where are they? Here we are. Okay, so. So, uh, the enemy, right, this is a little misconstrued, so, um, first of all, we should check this, so, Just take that out. Um, actually, no, because they are always going to start in their zone and then it just moves on to this. This will be its continued check while it's idling around in it. So we'll have a behaviour for while it's idling in its home zone. Like it'll just walk around inside the zone. And then, yeah. Okay, this is fine. This is only a rough jotting anyway. Um, so, we want to say um, we need a signal from this. What should I press? Or something. Um, if body entered and now we say if body Actually, no. We want if player. That will have to be changed as well, because, it's like I said, it's not only going to be players and things. I'm probably going to have to learn how groups work. So I'll get around to it. So, for now, if player in body name, then... Um, 
then I guess we can say loss movement. Actually, no, we don't want to call that there. We need a boolean. I'll explain why in a second. So, uh, player detected bool uh, equals false to begin with. Um, yeah, so the reason the reason why uh, we need to do a bool and not call this here is because this is going to have to run longer than one frame. So this is going to have to run continuously, probably with inside the process um, function. So this this is just going to turn this on, which then will allow this to run. So to clarify further, if I can type, uh, yeah. So we want to say um, if player detected actually player detected is probably a bad phrase um we'll use instead of player detected um player in detection so place all okay so if players in detection zone then we'll call loss movement. So then inside here, this is where we're going to say, uh, let, let's do our um, pseudo code first. So we want to cast to player. Um, I believe when you send out a ray cast, it doesn't actually collide with anything. It'll just cast a straight line between two points. And then if it does collide with anything, then um, it'll just create an array. So you can get colliders, I think it's called. And then it, that'll give you an array of everything that it's hit on the way there. So essentially, you just want to check if any of the things that it's passed through are... Uh, an obstacle like a wall or a tree or something like that. So we're going to cast a player, check collision array for obstruction, and then if obstructed, do nothing or move. To last man position if there is one, and then uh, if not obstructed, actually, we'll just write else. What am I doing? Else move toward where. Right, that's the basic gist of it, I think. Um, actually, it's not do nothing. It's go back to... So, yeah, I guess I need to store the home zone as well. Um, how do I want to store the home zone? Um, well, I guess if the home zone spawns these, then they'll be added as children, so then it'll just get its parent position. We'll think about that when we get to it. Um, right, before I get code in this, I'm going to take a short intermission. So, bear with me, I'm out. I'll be back soon.
Hello, hello, hello. I have returned. Okay. Thanks. Indent. Ah, right, okay. Uh, if player's in body name, then player in detection zone is true. If player... If... Ah, shit, we need the... Need the other signal. Uh, if body exited... So... If player in body name... Uh, then player in detection zone is false. Oh, right, so first order of business is to cast this ray towards the player. So I don't need to set its current position because it will already be set to us. What I do need to set is the cast to. Let's make that zero to begin with. Collide with. What do we want to collide with? Probably collide with everything, I guess. Um, not areas, actually. You know. Okay, I'm not going to focus on making this incredibly robust. As we see problems, we can fix them as they come up. So, instead, what I'll do is... Uh, I don't want to play this. Right. Yeah, we'll just cast it to the player for now. So, to get the player's position. Being as the player's position is something that I think a lot of different things are going to need. I'm actually going to make a global script that will just constantly store the player's position. So this is just... Uh, call it global bars. Or... Global data. Um, and then within global data, uh, we need to make that an auto loaded script. Oh, brain, right, utility, global data. Right, and now as long as it's a global variable here, any script will be able to access it. So here, if we just say bar. Oh my god, if I can type player position uh, needs to be a vector to. Uh, it's going to equal null to begin with. And then. Uh, on. Wow, is this really the player script? Did I, really, I didn't really write much code for the player, did I? Right. Uh, on ready for the player. And we're also going to need it in process as well. But uh, once the player gets instantiated, then we need global data dot player position equals self dot global position. Okay, and then we also want to grab that as well. It's not. I don't think it's a hundred percent necessary that we have it in ready because. I don't think I'm ever going to put the player in a position where, as they spawn in, they're in an enemy's line of sight. But just to get that edge case out of the way, pop it into ready so it does it. So it's, well, it's ready when, <laughs> when the player gets instantiated. Okay. Um, what's not saved here? Something not saved. Uh, the imp can go back in there. Okay, so back to the imp script. Cast a player. We want to say lost cast dot cast two. Is it parentheses after that, or is it just? I don't think it is. I don't think that's a function. I think that's a property. So cast two. 
Am I wrong? Cash to uh, global data. Yeah, I think that's right. Let me just double check that that's a property and I haven't just come up with that. Yeah, so cash to is a property. And we refer to it as that. Cool. Right. And now we want to we wanna check its collisions. Actually, we are going to want to reset it, aren't we? Um, I'm going to need another variable. Store all those. Oh, have another sip of the terrible tasting monster assault. God, that really is fucking abysmal. If it wasn't such expensive shit, I'd have been it. Uh, right. I'm gonna create a variable. Where do I want to create it? Yeah. Variable, um, objects in site could be an array, and again, it will be null. But now, here we will say, um, Objects in sight equals null. Oh, wait, an uh, array can't equal null. We have to equal an empty array. Um, yeah, that's right. God, I'm having like a massive brain melt at the moment. <laughs> right. What's next? So, we've cast, and now we want to check for obstruction. So, it's important that we reset this before casting. Actually, we need to reset this outside of here, because this is going to be getting called on multiple frames, so it'll just keep resetting. Um, instead, here. No. Shit. Hmm. Can you write recursion in Godot? Does it allow that? Okay, apparently you can write recursion. Nice. In that case, we can pop it back in here, and then we can make this recursive inside here. Oh, this is... I'm making this very overcomplicated. Uh... I swear, this Huntsman, honestly, like, you've only got to lean on the key just very slightly, and it's fucking... <laughs> it's so hypersensitive. I don't know if you can switch the keys out on these. I don't think they're that sort of keyboard. I need, like, a modular one. Right, anyway. I don't like the idea of doing recursion, to be honest. Does it reset it every time you cast? I would like to know. So cast to set cast to value the raised destination point. Okay. So get collider returns. Oh, okay. We don't need, ah perfect. Get collider. We don't want. Yeah. So we don't even need to deal with the raise. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Right. So we can fuck that off. Right. Can fuck that off. And no need to do recursion. Fuck yes. 
Okay. Oh, I'm breaking stuff. Desk's breaking. All right. And we can say check. Well, uh, if lostcast dot get collider dot name um if player in right we'll do not first so if they're not in there then um then they're obstructed uh Ah, oh, come on, brain. Can't put it there. Player, uh, plus nine position. Uh, needs to be a vector two. And we don't need anything in there right now. So, if it's not there, and uh, player LMP equals null, then um, do we want to do knots first? Because no, because if it, if it's not anything, then. Actually, then, yeah, then we return home. Now we'll pass, because we don't have that functionality. Um, all right, let me just move the, the pseudo code around. Um, I need that. Let's just get rid of all of it for now. I can comment it later. So, oh man, my brain was not ready for this vicious assault, not even this assault. I don't think anyone is ready for monster assault, That's, it's before it's time I think. Once the human race has evolved to just not have taste buds then it'll be perfect. Um, return home, uh, else if, we can, we can shorten this, um, take that, to the bar, uh, Line of sight. Collider. What kind of spell went right in front of me? Line of sight collider. Line of sight collides. Oh, fuck me. Layer in what? What's that? Yeah, so that's a, that's a boolean statement. Just make sure that it always is because a weird variable like that, you don't want to accidentally set it to something else. Um, yeah, so now we can get rid of that for shit. Player in loss and. Fire LMP. Fire LMP equals no. That's fine. Okay. Well, let's hand let's handle the easy insight. So, um. 
Am I even... I'm, I'm leaning right out of the camera now. Scoot over this way a little. <laughs> I sit very weird. Right. Okay. So, uh, if wiring loss and actually we don't need to check the last known position if they're in line of sight so now uh, no okay i'm gonna have a Do I want like the movement here? Yeah. No. That's stupid. Or actually, is it because this is called lost movement, so it should probably handle all of it? Let's have a move to target. Um, function move to target. It intakes the target. And it should say. Um, we don't even have a velocity and speed on this. Velocity, uh, variable velocity is a vector 2 and it equals vector 2 error and speed is an integer that equals what's the player's speed fucking out 120 is it okay uh probably like 70 right probably export not as well epoxert Uh, right. What's wrong with this now? Indented bar. I don't need to talk. Oh shit. <laughs> uh, right. So we can do velocity dot. interpolate velocity. What's the fucking syntax line here in top? Well, oh, it doesn't apparently that just doesn't exist. Is it lerp? Yeah, lerp from uh lost no I we want from well viable position to um target uh, oh my god why can't I target <laughs> uh speed do we even need velocity on something that isn't player controlled We will if we need acceleration and things. But right now, it's a no. Right, okay. This is going to be fucking hell to debug. <laughs> right, so. If we're in line of sight, then we say move uh, to target, and the target is global data dot player position okay so that should just in a straight line move towards the player if they're in line of sight <laughs> um so if they're in line of sight if they're not in line of sight and there's no lmp How am I going to do it now? Where? Uh, right, okay. Yeah, 
Yeah, actually, LMP should be updated in here. Player last known position equals. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, if player's in line of sight, we update the last known position to the player's position and then move towards them. Good. Um, if the player's not in line of sight and the player's last known position is null, then we return home. If the player is not in line of sight and player last known position is not equal to null then we want to move uh, move to target player LMP um, So what does this do now? So right, we check if we can see them. If we can, we move towards them and update their last known position. If we can't and there's no last known position, we return home. If we can't and there is a last known position, then we move towards them. Okay. Right, and now we need to Ah, wait, this isn't going to work. No, we don't want that. Uh, because we only want this to be set to true by the the interaction of the zone. So we're on, we're going to set it to false in here. So we'll say if the player's not in sight. Uh, actually, we don't we don't need to do. We? So if the player's not in sight and LMP equals null, then Actually, no, because the LMP won't equal null. Let me try and play this out in my head. So we've seen the player. The LMP is now the player's position. We move to the player's position, but suddenly we can't see them anymore. So then we'll run through it again. Can't see them, so now we're here. There is an LMP, so now we're here. And we move to LMP. So in here, um, if self global position um, is is equal to uh, the last known position of the player, then we can say the player's last known position is null. Oh, okay, it's a fuck's sake, it's a vector two zero then. So this is this is why you need um this is why you need type safety. And in fact that's not gonna work now. Oh Right. 
So as long as the player isn't on coordinate zero zero, then this will work, and I'm happy with that for now. Until the day arises where I get a bug where the player being on zero zero breaks this. Okay. So, uh, where's our notes? Let's compare. So, the player enters the enemy awareness shape. That's here. And now we've set detection zone to true. Every frame we're checking is detection zone true, so that would be yes. And then we'd call this. Okay, um... Oh, fuck, 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 right, home position... Home position, for now... Can equal... I'll be a position away from us at the moment, um... Okay, what's that position? That is two five two minus one five six. Two five two minus one five six. And that is a vector two. Obviously this is hard coded and it won't be this way in the future because we want to set this once it's spawned. So the home will spawn it. This will spawn it. Um, so it's a good thing we have got a script actually. Ooh. Oh, how long have we been going for? An hour and a quarter. That's a lot longer than that. Let's try and get this sorted out then. So. Uh, return home, we say, uh, oh, return, return home is a boolean, and it equals false for now, and then here we say return home. It's true. And if return um you don't actually have to write is true there. Like it works shorthand as well, so you can say like is if return home. So because th this is going to come back true or false, it's a boolean. So it's like if true, if false. Um, if you want to do false, it's that. So if it's not true, then yeah. Uh, anyway, I, I like it for readability to be like that because it's just easier to see what's intended. Intended. Um, easier to spot bugs as well. Uh, what am I doing? Right, if return home. Then move to target, and the target is home position. And then we can say if home position is the same as self global position. Then, then return, return home is false because that task is now accomplished. I'm also going to 
switch these around because for some reason I don't like the order of that. Okay. Right, let's go back through our list. Um, so. The player enters enemy awareness zone. Yep. And now that starts this. So, does a ray cast between enemy and the player hit an obstacle? So we check that. There. If yes, has the enemy already seen the player? That's there. And there. If no, move towards player. Yeah. If yes, then uh, has the enemy already seen the player? No. Then we return home. Yeah. You know? Otherwise, so we we returned home. Otherwise, get last known position and move towards it. Player still in the enemy awareness. Right? And not turn on if they are. Okay. Hmm. Don't know if I want to do that. Do I? Uh, see how this works first. I I have no idea what to expect, to be honest. Oh, well, we should have expected errors. Invalid index name on base null instant. <sighs> right. Oh. Null instance. What? How is that a null instance? No. That should be the other. So we cast to the player. How is, how is that? No, I don't understand. My brain. Get Collider. Is it not dot name? Dot. What does Get Collider return? Get Collider returns the first object that the ray intersects, or null if no object is intersecting the ray. Is colliding returns formed? Well, I don't understand. Can you view. Oh, wait, hang on, it's because we didn't fucking enable it, did we? Or I, I'm not going to blame everyone else. <laughs> uh, right, okay. So in here, we, we, lostcast.enabled, that's true. And then, um, in here, if we're going to return home, then we can make it false, because we're not going to need it. Um, also, just to get ahead of the curve, I'm going to put return home is false in these as well, just so we don't accidentally 
override behavior and have conflicting behaviors. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Try again. Nope, oh, don't like it. Name on null instance. Does it show ray casts with collision shapes? Invalid operand string and object. Okay, so it is finding. I don't understand what gets. So we return the object. Returns the shape ID. Ah, fuck. <laughs> oh, that's not what I wanted. Okay. Let's see what that looks like then. Um. Lock. Okay. Can I just like pass from there downwards? So we can say uh, print that. Does it not print it even if it breaks? Object null. That's not helpful. Shit. Why is it getting null? So we cast the player. It's not null. It's not null. It finds the object. So it's a timing issue. Oh, why? Uh, fuck. Right. Oh man. Why? Uh, I mean, we could just do this all the time, I guess. Let's see if that fixes it. No. I have pause isn't declared. Oh, looks like. Name on no instance. How am I going to fucking... Oh, man. How the fuck do I get an object ID? I guess I can, like... Oh, fuck. Self.id. That's something I can do. Self.getInstanceID. So we can do... Global data of our player ID is... I, I don't know what it is. Oh, I can't exactly be type, type so. Uh, fuck, this is fucking horrible. Right. Uh, play a script, so we say 
global die uh dot play uh play day equals that and then in here we say if that equals um data so that does that object and int What the fuck is this? <laughs> Get um, how the fucking <laughs> uh, how did I do it in here? So yeah, instance ID, I guess. An instance is an object, right? Who even knows at this point? This is horrific. There's got to be an easier way of doing this. Good God. Sounds called get from a null instance on a null instance. Uh. <laughs> Can I just do two string on this then or something? Is, is to string a, a fucking thing? I don't know. Oh, I know it's STR and it was that. Oh, God, this is horrific. This may be the nastiest code I've ever written. Invalid. Oh, okay, we've moved past that issue then. So. Invalid get index global position on vector 2. Oh, right, because target to vector 2 anyway. Uh, well, look, <laughs> I mean, it looks like it's trying to work. Maybe. <laughs> what the fuck is it doing? Oh, uh, fuck. It's a <laughs> uh, fuck's sake, right. Oh. Uh, okay. I think I'm going to take a break there. So I might carry on streaming later on, or I might stream tomorrow or some other time. I'm thinking about starting to make the game dev stuff um, more based around like YouTube videos and things like that for this reason exactly, because it's difficult to like code sort of complex systems and things. Apparently I'm clipping the microphone. Just turn that down a little bit, there we go. But um yeah, uh, like I don't know. It's it's difficult to program complicated systems and things live because Sometimes it goes really well and it's just simple. Like, for instance, yesterday. That was, like, really fucking easy. And then today has not been as straightforward as I thought it would be. It's probably not a hard fix, to be honest. But because I don't know how to fix it, it's going to involve loads of Googling. And, yeah, it's probably not going to be the most exciting content. If I do any more tonight, it'll probably be more design work or animation and things like that. Um, if I feel like I'm going to do anything interesting to do with the game, I'll either record it for a video at some point or uh, stream it. So, yep. Thanks anyone who popped by. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.